Good morning. This is Norm Thaggard on board Mir Station along with my crewmates, Commander Volodya Dejurov and Flight Engineer Gennady Strakalov. Right now, we're busy making preparations for tomorrow's anticipated docking of the space shuttle with the Mir Station. That should be exciting for all of us, and we certainly look forward to it. Not the least of our reasons, of course, is uh, we've already been here almost four months, and the space shuttle is basically our ride home. As we prepare, we are uh, at the same time uh, breaking some things out for uh, further checking as sort of a last-minute uh, verification that uh, some of the equipment that arrived in Spectre will work. But on the other hand, to try to make the station a bit neater, we're also trying to pack some things away and make some order to the station. So it's a busy time. Nonetheless, we're happy to have the opportunity to talk with the uh, folks in Connecticut who are participating in the... I will try and handle any questions that are uh, given in English, and my crewmates can answer those questions that are presented in Russian, and maybe in that way we can uh, answer all the questions. And with that, we're standing by. My name is Vera. Do you speak uh, foreign languages? Foreign language. We uh, speak many foreign languages that are uh, even within the boundaries of Russia, even though Russia is the primary language. As you well know, within Russia there are many separate republics and many republics have their own languages. Uh, of course, since we are uh, on an international mission, we understand English and even try sometimes to speak in English. We have a gentleman by the name of Mike who wants to ask a question. What's the greatest uh, distance that you have flown from the planet? Well, right now we're flying in orbit. It's uh, 400 to 415 kilometers in altitude, and we are in this uh, orbit and flying around the, uh, the Earth at this distance. Atlantis, Houston, loud and clear for the ODS comm check. Transmitting on air to ground one. Okay, Dave, thanks. For some reason, we can't make the uh, ICOM work from the same box. Copy that, Charlie. Inco's earning his money today, Charlie.
Uh, Commander Hood Gibson and Pilot Charlie Precourt about to uh, conduct a test of the post-contact thrust system. This is a computer software on the shuttle, which when initiated, which when initiated uh, will provide about a two-second burst of several of the shuttle's jet thrusters at the point of contact between the shuttle and the Mir space station tomorrow to drive the two docking mechanisms more closely together and initiate the capture sequence between the capture latches on the orbiter docking system's docking mechanism and uh, comparable latches uh, on the Crystal Science Module's docking mechanism on the mirror. The shaking of the picture representing the firing of those thrusters. Is complete, and I guess you can probably look at the traces and make sure it did everything, right? Copy. Uh, initial evaluation looks right on the money, and we see the rates through camera A. The uh, test involves the extension of this docking ring to about 13 inches in length. That will duplicate. that will duplicate the activity that will occur uh, once the two uh, vehicles come into contact with one another tomorrow during docking. The mechanical systems officer here in the Mission Control Center reports that that uh, docking ring is being driven properly, is moving forward uh, to, it, to its extended position. It is at that extended position that the orbiter uh, will come into contact with the uh, docking mechanism on the Crystal Science module on the mirror and thus initiate the capture of the two vehicles uh, with a series of capture latches that are located in those three triangular pedals uh, at the top of the docking ring. You can clearly see the docking ring now extending upwards uh, from the uh, docking system itself. At the point of uh, contact between the two vehicles, the capture latches uh, on the top of that extended ring will uh, hook on to uh, comparable latches on the Crystal module docking mechanism. Then the capture ring will be retracted to bring the two docking interfaces flush against one another. At that point, the structural mating of hooks and latches on both sides of the docking interfaces between Atlantis and the mirror uh, will begin. The entire process from contact through capture and then the hard mating of the two vehicles against each other should take about 20 to 25 minutes. This is a Russian-built docking mechanism, uh, which was built by RSC Energia, the main hardware uh, manufacturer for Russian spacecraft hardware. It was then integrated uh, into the orbiter through Rockwell International in Downey, California. On the right side of the screen, as the orbiter passes in darkness, uh, is a very faint view of the centerline camera, uh, which is located at the top of the uh, inside a porthole uh, at the top of the orbiter docking system, uh, which will be used as a uh, navigational aid by Commander Hoot Gibson and Pilot Charlie Precourt during the final phase of the rendezvous and approach to the Mir space station tomorrow. Uh, in the crosshairs on that uh, shot on the right side of the split screen uh, would be the Crystal Science Module's docking target. The two, uh, the two views will enable Gibson and Precourt to perfectly align uh, the orbiter docking system mechanism with the uh, Crystal Science Module docking mechanism uh, for a precise uh, point of contact and capture. Energia designed and built this uh, Russian docking mechanism. It was integrated into uh, the orbiter docking system and then into the orbiter itself uh, by NASA and Rockwell International. And the uh, initial test of that docking system and the extension of the docking ring went off without a hitch earlier this morning as mission specialist Greg Harbaugh, who's uh, chiefly in charge of the docking system, uh, used uh, two motors uh, through uh, a control panel at the aft flight deck uh, of Atlantis' uh, flight deck to uh, drive that docking mechanism upward to its fully extended uh, position of 13 inches above the top of the docking system. 
This will enable uh, Commander Hoot Gibson to use this image aboard Atlantis on the aft flight deck on a special TV camera he has set up back there in order to perfectly align the docking ring on the orbiter docking system with that of the Crystal module. The three... Well, it's a good image, Greg, and uh, we have a good mux now, we see. Uh, it's going to be spectacular looking at a mere space station through there. Yes, sir, it certainly will be. On the right side of the screen, the image of the centerline camera. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the backup and install the primary. You bet, Doreen. We're all set. All right, let's uh, let's begin the interview then. I'll I'll tell you all that we are on tape. We're not live, so everybody can relax. Um, this is, uh, this is a very exciting uh, mission. If all goes as planned, tomorrow, tomorrow morning you will uh, reach out and shake hands with uh, Russian cosmonauts for the first uh, docking with the, with the Russians in, in 20 years. Is there a sense, do, do you feel a sense of, of history on this mission? I, I'll, I'll begin with you, Commander Gibson. Dorian, I guess I, I would have to say yes, very much so. I, I, I very much feel a sense of history uh, and of, uh, of following a tradition that we started 20 years ago and getting to continue in something that it has taken us a long time to pick up on again, but very much uh, feeling as though uh, we are continuing in some footsteps that were laid down a long, long time ago. And, of course, uh, any kind of effort like this is a a monumental team effort. There's an awful lot of work that's been going on on this flight for the last three years. Uh, we're very pleased that it's all coming together very nicely, and uh, yes, we very much feel a, a little bit of a flow of history as we proceed here. The docking tomorrow will be very, very complicated. Two, uh, two spacecraft that weigh more than a, than 100 tons trying to come together very precisely in, in orbit. Commander Gibson, how complicated is that going to be? Uh, Doreen, it's, it's kind of hard to compare it in complexity to anything we do in our in our everyday lives. Uh, I've never driven an 18-wheeler, so I don't I don't know about the complexity in one of those. But uh, it is a it is a complex sequence of events that we need to. Uh, choreograph very carefully, that we all need to fly very carefully. Uh, we have a very constraining corridor that we must stay within or we could conceivably damage the solar arrays on the mirror, for example. Uh, we have a limited amount of fuel to do all this with, so uh, all of which says it's a, it's a complex sequence of events, it's a very constrained sequence of events. Uh, now, now, having made it all sound very difficult, I will tell you that in the simulator, we had very, very good success, and we've done this uh, probably a couple of hundred times in the simulator. So we're looking forward very eagerly to doing it for real and for doing it uh, tomorrow. Bonnie Dunbar, you uh, you trained as the as the backup to uh, to Norm Thaggard, who is up uh, aboard the uh, the Mir right now. You're in a, in a kind of a unique position to, to talk to us a little bit about some of the differences between the Russian space program and the American space program and some of the, some of the real challenges uh, you all are having to overcome. Can, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I think what I learned primarily is that right now the two programs are very complementary. We have a, a very uh, unique transportation vehicle and its capability to launch with its payload and bring it back. And they have a, a permanently orbiting space station. Both programs uh, had intended to develop both elements. The Russians had developed a shuttle called Buran, and we're developing a space station internationally now with the Russians as well. So they're very complementary. I think the biggest challenge all along has not been the vision or the uh, mathematics or the working together. It's really been trying to, to learn each other's language or come to a common language and so that we can communicate our thoughts and our, our concepts and uh, our technical language. Let, let, me, uh, let me turn to your, to your cosmonaut uh, colleagues now. Uh, Colonel Solovia, what do you think the Russians 
bring to the American space program, and, and what does the American pro space program bring to the Russians? Вопрос полковнику Соловьеву. Как вы считаете, что российская программа привносит в американскую программу, и что американская программа, наоборот, привносит в российскую программу? Я думаю, что, во-первых, надо просто констатировать, что у нас есть чем обменяться. You have to uh, acknowledge that there is, are things that can be exchanged. I think we have a good, broad experience in piloting and in orbit. So, for example, we have uh, equipment that's been working for many years. From the point of view of the American space program, its contribution. I think the new technologies and ideas will allow us to significantly accelerate the development of the space station. All right. I, I have a, a question now for uh, Nikolai Budarin. This is your first space flight. What do you think so far? Теперь вопрос к господину Бударину. Это ваш первый космический полет. Каковы впечатления? Well, as concerns my being the rookie, and uh, now uh, with this flight, there's one cosmonaut more in the world. <laughs> the actual launch, there was nothing common about it. Uh, it was excellent, uh, owing to the excellent training. Uh, owing to the excellent training that we received. I have lost IFB. Because being inside the cabin, there is no external effect that can be observed. And it's probably much more interesting to observe, observe this from the side uh, as, as a bystander, particularly the launch. But inside, uh, from inside, it differed little from training. Of course, there was uh, a lot of uh, overloading uh, G-forces during launch. Uh, these did not affect me too bad, too badly. I think we have a very uh, challenging and rewarding program underfoot here, and uh, we're very honored to have the opportunity to be up here taking part in it. All right, thank you all.